It's an industry that's definitely struggling. I speak to a lot of designers and other people who work in the industry and a lot of people are saying they've never seen a climate like this before. Uh, they've been through recessions, they've been through many a great deal challenges in their careers and they said that this is a particularly challenging time because we have both a massive increase in costs of doing business and we also have a massive cost of living crisis where people are struggling to, to buy and support Australian fashion. So just tell us more if, about where Australians are getting their fashion from if they're not buying from the local brands. Yeah, there's a lot of research that has us believe that Australians are buying more fast fashion than almost any other country in the world based on our population. We know from a report by the Australia Institute a few months ago that Australians buy 56 items of new clothing every year and the average cost of those items is just $13, which led the researchers of that particular report to conclude that a lot of it is coming from internationally owned fast fashion companies. We also know that our own Kmart and big uh, box retailers such as them are also doing incredibly well, but it is leaving the independent Australian designers uh, in many cases mm. struggling. Is it becoming near impossible to compete with these ultra low priced fashion brands, particularly during this cost of living crisis when people are struggling so much they have no other choice but to buy the cheaper options? Yeah, and there's a lot of sympathy out there in the marketplace for that. We're not assuming that people can necessarily afford a three or four hundred dollar jacket on a, on a monthly or weekly basis on an average wage in order to support those designers. But I think what the sentiment is is that to to try and support where you can. Uh, when we when we log on to some of these overseas owned websites and see that you can buy a t-shirt for a dollar fifty nine, I think that raises a lot of economical and also ethical questions about how that t-shirt came to be and also the implications for it once it's finished its life. I was unfortunately at a fitness class yesterday and heard a lady talk about buying particular tops and saying, "Oh well, it doesn't matter if it you know it doesn't work out after six months, you can just throw it out and my heart broke a little bit, but I, mm. I bit my tongue. I didn't want to uh, say anything to her at 10 o'clock on a Friday morning. Now, often, Melissa, the fashion industry is dismissed as being frivolous, but it, it contributes a huge amount to the economy. What do we stand to lose if the local industry, if the Australian industry is not supported? Yeah, Joe. I think we, we stand to lose jobs, obviously, and we also stand to lose a big slice of the contribution that it makes to the economy. We know already that in the last five years, just the Victorian manufacturing sector alone, which accounts for a roughly one third of Australian based clothing and footwear production has lost $200 million or close to 20% of its value, which is quite huge. Um, that's only a small part of what the overall fashion industry contributes to the economy. It's, it's in the 20 billions uh, every year. But the manufacturing sector is in trouble. And of course, you know, we, we want our Australian brands to be supported. A lot of them would love to be making locally, but it's prohibitively expensive. And what the Australian Fashion Council is calling for is greater support, both from a financial point of view, but also a skills and training point of view. What is the role of governments here? What can they do to support the industry, given how much it contributes to the economy? Well, obviously, there's there's money uh, that, that could be on the table to encourage increased production. There's also a real push on for greater investment in you know, manufacturing things like uniforms and government tenders for things like military uniforms, which I think in the past were more, you know, required. There was a greater quota that had to be Australian made. But I think in recent times, some of those have maybe slipped a little bit. And what the Fashion Council is saying is that in order to support our fashion brands, we need to underpin that with a robust clothing manufacturer industry. And I do distinguish between the clothing industry and the fashion industry um, to make that point. And so some of these makers, if they're supported enough by those regular contracts to produce uniforms and the, the bread and butter of the clothing that we wear, then they can also manufacture for some of these fashion brands that maybe aren't making in the same quantities, but obviously contribute to us having a 
diverse and, and colourful and successful industry.